This is the Bujar B 180 watt 9 BB solar panel. Let's talk about this and let's see if we can put it to better use. So the first thing I want to get into is the apparent size of these Bujar V panels. I feel like they just kind of like tweak it just a little bit to make it feel a little bit smaller than the competition. Before we move on to the specs, let's just talk about how long this cable is. Uh, it's pretty long. This is typical for 200 watt panels, but I was just seeing um, some 100 watt panels by EcoFlow. They had the cables coming out on the side and they were only about that long. I think that was a mistake. Anyway, we're looking at about 23 volts open circuit, 10 amps open circuit, and then uh, the real voltage is 19.2. They say give or take 3% and then 9.3 amps. The reason why that's a good look is because you think about our <laughs> our Blue Eddy devices, their own Bujar V Blue Eddy clone, they max out at 8 amps. The benefit of a panel like this is because it has a higher voltage open circuit, 23 and then drops down to 19, it has lower amps. I can't get into all the particulars about that, but this panel pairs well with those joints because they have that eight amp limit. Let me see if I can explain it real, real quickly. So simply volts times amps is watts. If you have a panel that has higher amps and lower volts, because you cap on your device at eight amps, that's a hard stop. So it's eight amps times the lower volts versus eight amps times the higher volts on panels like this and some other panels that I have. Actually, they're 200 has a more what i would call standard low voltage high amp which would not be a good pairing for an eb70 or eb55 or eb3a now this is a nine bus bar panel you can count them if you want instead of the typical five bus bar panels i did some research on this and they don't really explain <laughs> it's like it's more efficient you know what, what are you gonna do with that i, I don't know it's more efficient, maybe it operates, it's like cooler under it because it has something to do with having multiple coils like dissipating heat versus going across those five bus bars. I said coils at first, but I, I don't know. I, let me give you a spoiler alert. In my experience, a 200 watt panel is a 200 watt panel is a 200 watt panel. My 190s, the 200s I have, they may eat out a little more power, but under my circumstances, in the state that I'm in, Pennsylvania, I don't think it really makes a difference. Now, this Bougie V panel, I like the size because it sits right up here on my banister and some of my other panels, like my HQST 190, I'm gonna pull that up in a second so we can put them side by side. They're very close in size, but this one is just a hair bit smaller. Matter of fact, let's just do it. Remember I was saying earlier how Bougie V just does these little, <laughs> Is very little. This is actually very close in size to the HQST 190, which is something that I've observed in a short that I made. I can post that up up here. But these things pair really well with these kind of like higher voltage, lower amp panels that are ideal as it relates to the products that I talked about with those low amp input limits. Actually, <laughs> let me plot twist. This is supposed to be a 180 panel and that below it is a 190. But as I said earlier, these dips, they all produce about the same wattage. I've never seen a great discrepancy between the wattage output. But I guess it's saving grace is the 9BB bus bar technology. Now, I'm not one for talking about price, unless I have to, because price fluctuates. I want these videos to kind of live on to help people in the future. But this panel is not cheap. I don't know how Bougie V came up with the pricing situation for these panels. Maybe it's because the manufacturing cost or a little bit more because it uses this new cell technology, this 9BB stuff, but it's not cheap. So you have to weigh that um, looking at something like a different panel for about the same wattage output. Now, what I'm going to do is compare it to its 200 watt panel, which is interesting. It's 200 watts versus the 180. Check out the size difference here. Now, this is the 200 watt 9BB Bougie V panel. And you could see that it's a little bit wider and it's a little bit taller or oh, it's a little bit shorter. So that's an interesting thing. They're not necessarily on equal footing, but it still makes the point 
Um, so it, you have options if you're considering Bouge RV for your panels. Now this particular panel is um, a lower volt output with a higher amp output. I believe the EcoFlow River has a 15 amp input limit. I was actually looking into this yesterday, but I could not find it on their site. It wasn't easy. And I don't know where. I would probably have to watch someone's video, like Jason Oid or Hobotech, somebody like that, to find out what the amp input limit. So this one will work better for something with a higher amp input limit. So you can actually get those amps in versus this one back here, which works with the lower amp input limit because it has the higher voltage. Hopefully that makes sense. Now let's do the exact numbers here. One thing I like about Bouge RV panels is they have the contact information right there on the joint. So you can see on this one, this one is a 200 watt panel. Open circuit is 21.62. That one is 23 point something. Amps, 12 amps. Now, realistically, the amps fluctuate when you're getting power from the sun, depending on the intensity of the sun. The voltage typically stays the same unless you have some voltage sag in your cables. That's my understanding. So you think about that. 12 amps. Let's say realistically you're getting about 10 to 11 amps on a like a banging day, a Habib Marwan day. Then you got four three two to three amps you're just throwing away you can't use that's the same problem you run into when you put two 100 watt panels in parallel but realistically those 100 watt panels at five point some odd amps a piece will only put out about eight amps anyway so it kind of works out but then the voltage comes into play Another thing that comes into play is what the MPPT is going to do to the voltage because it has to drop it down to be able to use it to charge that battery in the first place. So again, the best bet is to go with the ones that have the higher voltage, lower amps for these devices that have these caps. I will do some output test when the sun comes up because it's not around. Um, I'll put that footage in soon, but let's talk about what I have going on here really quickly. Um, this is a HQST 190. I guess I can tell you what the volts and the amps are on this real quick. The open circuit voltage is 24.3. The optimum or the real use is 20.3. And then your amps is open circuit 10.1. Five, I believe and then I'm looking at 9.36 now typically when two panels don't really match completely they seem to equalize more so than one drop to the lower one in my experience maybe in um, larger arrays they actually do drop to the least common denominator but I've seen them kind of like live in the middle so I think these panels will work well together if you rock with me on patreon then you saw a whole video about me Kind of trying to figure this out uh, patreon link is down in the bottom interesting little development since i'm swip switching panels around um this is the rich solar 200. no it's not necessarily on equal footing i guess we could do it like that the rich solar is a little wider but it's a 200. that is peculiar that's what we're looking at right there all right so i've set up the Bouge RV right here and the HQST 190 right here. I'm sorry about that dog barking. It's freaking annoying, but I'm tuning it out. Y'all try to as well. <laughs> now I put them here because this area is getting sun. So I'm going to compare them at that output right now. So the sun is not cooperating with me today, but I have those two panels hooked up. Come on, get in there. And I just want to make the point that 180, 190, it doesn't matter. They pretty much output the same things. You can see here that that's getting 43. And let me show you what the EcoFlow is getting because the app's not working. 43. So these panels, no matter what the output, they're going to perform very close to each other. So I'm going to still try and get some sun outputs. But typically what I see across both of these panels is about 140, 130. And this across all of them. As you guys may have not may know, if you've been around for a while, I compared a Renergy to an HQST. I'll toss the video up there, plugged into the EB70 and uh, EcoFlow, and they perform pretty much the same. So in a lot of ways, the AM input limit doesn't have a whole lot of bearing, but I still think we have to be strategic about the panels that we get by because under perfect conditions or more close to standard test conditions then some panels will perform better than others it just is what it is now hopefully we can get some real sun 
on these panels to get some real output. But this is what I'm looking at right now. All right, this might be my shot to get some real sun uh, joints out of here. I can't compare them anymore because the sun is off kilter. So that wouldn't be necessarily a fair whatever. <laughs> it's a little bit high, so I just have to lower this down a little more. Sun is about to come into a clearing with a little bit of haze, so pretty close. So well, let's look at what we got now. Cooler temperature is nice. I'm starting to see better sun output because it's getting cooler. So we're looking at 165, 166. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> and the reason why that's pretty impressive is because I just off top for my own sanity, I take 20% off a of panel output from Go. So a 180 watt panel, AT, AT 36. Take away 36, that's 150 something. So anytime it performs better than that, I'm good to go. I'm good money. <laughs> I, I, ain't, I am not complaining.